Hey folks, how's it going? My name is Omkar Jagdai and I'm coming at you from Detroit, Michigan. And um, today I'm going to talk to you about civil engineering jobs in America. So especially USA. Okay, so from my experience, I graduated in 2016. I have four years of experience working in the civil industry. I've worked at five different companies during that time. Um, and my experience has been really about understanding the civil industry. And so I'm going to share some of the tips and some of the things you should expect going into the civil engineering field if you are trying to get your master's in US or you're trying to find a job in civil engineering area. So first of all, uh, you need a master's degree or a bachelor's degree from US to find a job in US because the United States does not recognize degrees from outside the US. It's very hard for, it's gonna be very hard for you to find a job in US if you don't have a US degree. And that is given. Any company will be hesitant to hire you if you don't have a US degree. Second, <clears throat> there are two fields you can work on, uh, especially after graduating from um, your degree. I graduated with a bachelor's degree and when I was graduating, I actually found a job in construction field. So there are two fields, one is construction and then one is design. In construction field, you're mostly 90, 95% of the time you will be working in the field. Um, for me, at that time when I graduated, my first job was a construction inspector. I worked in the field from morning to evening, like sunrise to sundown. Most days my work started at 7 a.m. and I usually finished by 5 and other days I would usually go up to 7, maybe even 8 o'clock. So that's because the summers is when they maximize the amount of work they do. So your summers will be about six months in a year, you'll be working really hard. And during winters, you may be even laid off if depending upon which part of the US you are. If you are in the northern part like Michigan, you might even be laid off for a couple of months because there is no work during that time or work is really slow or there is a lot of snow. So you wanna choose the field you get into really well. Also, construction field usually will not sponsor your H-1B. So if you're looking into H-1Bs, construction inspection jobs do not sponsor, at least from my experience, because they do not qualify for H-1B criteria. So my advice would be get into a design field. That's what happened to me from my construction inspection job. I jumped into a design work, and that's where I found a company that was willing to sponsor me for my H-1B. So the design work really includes you designing highways, roads, maybe buildings, parking lots. So these kind of work like allow you to really get your H1B because you're a highly qualified individual. Uh, structural engineering, another field where you can really, um, most people get their H1B sponsored if they find the right company. So that's. Third thing I would like to talk about is your income in civil industry. So civil industry actually pays a little bit less compared to mechanical, compared to uh, computer science, compared to electrical. So you're, you should go into the industry expecting that, hey, you will usually get between 50 to 60K after graduating. Um, that's That goes for undergrad and masters. Usually an undergrad and masters may have a little bit difference of maybe 5,000, max seven to $8,000 in their salary ranges. So I would suggest if you're looking into civil engineering degree, make sure that you know what you're expecting. Now, how do you beat these incomes? How do you make more money? So there are options where you can earn more income as a civil engineer. First thing you need to do is take your FE exam as soon as you graduate or before you graduate. FE exam is fundamental of engineering, which is a basically pre-licensed exam that allows you to start working at good companies. Usually companies will look for that FE license or an engineering training license for you to hire. After you have three years of experience as a master's or four years as an undergrad, you can apply for your PE exam and you can take that and once you pass, you'll get your PE license. This license allows you to stamp plans and various other things which you can do as a professional engineer. So this also gives you a salary bump at your company. Most companies will give you about four to five thousand dollars of salary raise and this will allow you to jump income levels which maybe some of your counterparts or some of your colleagues in other industries are making. So this is one way you can get ahead uh, but it's kind of a slow path because you need to wait three to four years to get that experience and then get your FE exam. A fourth thing I would like to talk about is your income as how can you get into that big income ranges, like 100K ranges? The 
from my experience i found out is senior engineers or highly qualified engineers usually don't make that kind of money unless you get into management so management is the way to go if you can lead a team of people 5 10 20 people that's what you want to look at you want to look at eventually having your own team and managing that's the only way you can get into the 100k salary ranges outside of california and new york uh, i don't know much about them how what happens there and how what kind of income salaries uh, they provide but at least in this field that's what i found out that you need to get into management role as soon as possible for you to make that kind of big money so that's pretty much what i had in civil engineering field so far um, if you have any questions uh, drop a comment and i'll get back to you and uh, i'll see you in the next video